Ladies and gentlemen, Belisarius Prime was just revealed officially by Rise of Kingdoms, and I'm struggling to decide if he's actually worth it or not. Today, we're going to go over the truth about Belisarius Prime. Okay, is he going to be the new meta or or not? Let's let's really break it down here in today's video. We're going to go over the best pairings for this commander. I'm going to show you guys some of the best talent builds you can be using. And don't get me wrong, there is one commander pairing and one thing about Belisarius Prime that looks absolutely broken, but the rest of his kit is I don't know. Let's just get right into it here. First of all, the design looks really cool. He actually looks a little bit more Giga Chad than the epic version of Belisarius. So I am excited about that. But here is the deal with Belisarius Prime. He is cavalry versatility and mobility. These talent trees, we haven't seen a talent tree this disgusting in quite a while. Now, there is going to be a use for the mobility tree here, and I will go over it in the talent tree section, but truthfully when it comes to dealing massive damage this is not going to be a primary commander it just isn't okay there is going to be a niche use for him as primary but realistically all of the open field meta primary commanders are typically skill tree support tree and that's kind of it i mean we really don't see anything outside of that super often especially not for cavalry right infantry sometimes has attack tree defense tree whatever but mobility tree i mean we're looking at this is tau tau right we're like legendary mobility tree that's tau tau now i'm excited excited that we have another mobility tree commander here because I there are I'll talk about uses in a second but let's go over the skills because I'm sure this is what you guys are most interested about you want me to talk about this active skill 1000 rage requirement single target damage okay deals direct damage to a target troop with a damage factor of 2400 for the next two seconds the target loses 50 rage per second so that's a total of 100 rage and if the target is surrounded it is inflicted with the deception effect for five seconds so this is a debuff on the target five seconds is a very long time for a debuff and the deception effect makes the targets active skill rage requirement 200 rage higher okay so if the target is surrounded and they're hit with this debuff okay their rage requirement goes from 1000 to 1200 and also they're going to lose 50 rage per second for two seconds so you're kind of hitting them coming and going right it's going to take them longer to hit their active skill because they're losing rage every turn and also they need more rage for the next five seconds to hit it so this is this skill right here is the one thing about Belisarius that I think is insane. This is going to be, this is going to cause so many problems in the open field. This is almost like a silence effect from Guan Yu. The thing about Guan Yu is you silence them. They can't use their active skills for a few seconds. And this is probably going to have a similar effect in the open field, especially because it's five seconds like that's actually insane and also if you guys didn't know the rage loss per second 50 rage per second that occurs after you've hit your rage cap right so even if you have you know william nearby joan of arc nearby you have a horn of fury you have all these different talents proc let's say you get a, a total of like 350 rage that turn okay well it's still capped out at the rage cap and then after the rage cap is hit and all your excess rage is discarded then you lose 50 rage after that okay so it's not like you can start to over rage now and be safe from this there's no being safe from this type of debuff you will always feel the effect of that rage loss so keep that in mind moving on to the second skill you have 30 percent attack 20 percent march speed i love the 20 percent march speed here is universal it's on your territory your enemy's territory wherever that's amazing 30 percent attack is a little bit boring for cavalry this these days we have tons of attack on william tons of attack on Hua. we have tons of attack everywhere so 30 percent attack is kind of lame and also whenever this commander's troop exits combat cavalry units in their troop gain 60 percent march speed for five seconds this is going to be exceptional for hit and run combat you're going to be able to run away from enemies like better than any other commander in the open field effectively however this isn't that exciting to me i'm not here to run away from fights i'm here to be in fights okay if you're running on farm killing this is congratulations the best commander to use um no questions there for sure but i'm honestly just not that excited about march speed after exiting combat okay moving on to the third skill it says this commander's cavalry units gain 25 percent defense that's great i'm very excited to see that we have a lot of stats on this commander now it's not as much as huo so this is less attack than huo and less defense than huo okay but it says when this commander troop is on the map whenever it launches a basic attack it has a 10 percent chance to deal extra direct damage with a damage factor of 500 and a five second cooldown now this is instant proc damage which honestly is usually very good and 
this is just giving more damage to Belisarius's kits but this skill is just not as exciting as I think it should be so let's we're gonna go over all this in a second uh, just keep in mind I, I will break down why I'm kind of underwhelmed so far this fourth skill says this commander's troop takes 10 percent less skill damage okay that's a nice you know reduction it's nothing insane but it is nice to have and then also if you're attacking another troop on the map and the target troop has less than 80 percent units remaining you deal 30 percent more skill damage okay so this is going to stack really nicely with the skill damage bonus that we already have on a lot of other commanders like huo and like nevsky okay but there is a condition here under 80 percent units remaining i don't understand why that would be conditional right dealing 30 percent more skill damage like I don't see why that should be or has to be conditional for under 80 percent why can't I get 30 percent more skill damage for all of my skill hits why do they have to be under 80 I don't really understand why that is the case let's take a look at the expertise here it says if the target of this commander's troop is surrounded increases the targets damage received based on the number of troops surrounding it so if there are three troops hitting the target they take six percent more damage four troops is nine percent more damage five troops is 12 percent more damage now this is a debuff it looks like on the target because again damage received okay increases the target's damage received so that's gotta be a debuff this has to be a debuff but this doesn't describe sort of anything as, as to how the debuff is actually going to work but one thing that is for sure is that if you're swarming a flag swarming a fort swarming a rally you're going to need a belisarius prime i think right if the current target of this commander's troop is surrounded there's no specification as to them needing to be on the map this seems to be no matter what the target is they will take more damage and that's from all sources okay so this expertise is deceptively good but is it a must have for all players that's the real question here right now one last thing that i want to mention about this expertise is that it specifies a number so if you're swarming a target with six or more troops do you lose this benefit right because it specifically says if you are swarming with five troops it doesn't say five or more it does like there's no this is very unclear okay so if the if a target has six seven eight troops surrounding it do you no longer get this benefit do you is five the sweet spot right i actually hate the wording of this because we have no idea uh how this is actually going to work and if you lose this debuff after five troops like six seven eight troops then that makes this expertise way worse than it actually looks still good but like that would just be ridiculous i think it probably will be five or more that's probably what they meant but it's not what it says and so like we have to be prepared for that to possibly be a reality where if you have six seven armies you lose the benefit here which would be hilarious look here's the deal so far if we're looking at the kit five 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 one is looking solid to me this last skill doesn't really get me that excited the expertise does get me excited but man that's a lot of sculptures to get more damage here and there's other ways to get more damage now i'm going to talk more about the total kit here in just a second but first let's quickly go over um some talent builds that you could consider for belisarius prime and luckily he has very similar talent builds to belisarius the epic commander okay now of course epic belisarius has the peacekeeping tree legendary belisarius prime has the versatility tree but in pvp you're gonna skip that tree in its in total all the time okay so really there's two talent builds that i would consider here this would be the fastest talent build that i would look at okay first of all you grab alacrity so whenever you're inflicted with a slow you have a 30 percent chance to negate it i think this is more important now than ever because we have slowdowns on huo we have slowdowns on liu che we have slowdowns on william we have slowdowns on there's a few other commanders i think Boudica prime has a slowdown on her active skill there's so many slowdowns in the open field right now that i think this is really really nice you also grab uh six percent march speed here you grab hasty departure you get 60 percent march speed after le leaving a building a resource point that's going to be incredible whenever you take skill damage you take you get 15 percent march speed for five seconds and guys you will be taking skill damage so you're going to get this up pretty much all the time there's basically no cooldown according to the text here also i came up here grabbed in blaze and shield that's an incredible talent we grab of course undying fury for the extra rage you also get some extra march speed here in the cavalry tree here and here so that's another 12 percent and also we had a couple of points left over i put them into equestrian excellence so whenever you are launching a basic attack 
you gain some extra march speed so you stay connected to that target but if you don't love this talent and i don't blame you at all then you could do something like this you can remove those points and you could put the four points here and everything in this talent tree stays the same except you remove one point from swiftness okay so you get 10 percent march speed when hit with skill damage you only had two points left so i threw it here because why not but you do get the full four points into disarm which means you have a 10 percent chance to reduce the target's attack by 20 percent for two seconds that's a very good talent so when we're comparing these two talent builds as you can see they're very very similar this one's going to just be better for pvp this one's going to be slightly faster in all different scenarios um if you wanted to modify this and take a few more points away from the from the march speed tree the mobility tree and you wanted to put them in rally and cry you could but this is for just the first 10 seconds of battle now the reason rallying cry might be something you want to consider is actually because of the pairings that you might want to use with belisarius prime so what do i mean by that well let's take a look at some of the commanders that we could consider pairing belisarius prime with now the first commander that came to mind for me was nevsky and here's the thing like i said before belisarius prime will be a secondary commander most of the time unless you're doing hit and runs unless you need that march speed you're probably gonna have him as secondary okay and if you pair with nevsky there's a little bit of synergy here because first of all he has the skill tree which you really need as primary second of all he also gains benefit from the target being surrounded okay and so remember on the active skill from belisarius there's the deception effect if the target is surrounded on the active skill and also with the expertise you're dealing more damage to surrounded targets and so nevsky also gains the benefit of targets being surrounded with the defense debuff here and also nevsky gives you a bunch of march speed as well but he also gives you a lot of health on the second skill and on his expertise and we don't see any health on belisarius and finally we also have more skill damage bonus so there's certainly a pairing to be made here I don't think it's the best pairing. The best pairing, in my opinion, is obviously Huo. This is a slam dunk. It feels like Belisarius was made for Huo as Belisarius being secondary. And the reason for this is, first of all, with the re decreased rage reduction on the third skill from Huo, you are going to most likely pop your active skill before the enemy, which means your secondary is also going to be popping their active skill as fast as basically possible, okay? You also have the skill tree here but why is it important to cast your active skill first well first of all big hit on huo second of all you've got this massive massive debuff on the uh, active skill from belisarius prime where now the target is going to cast their active skill even slower right the the importance of this isn't how good the debuff is but it's when are you timing that debuff right if you hit them and they've already casted their active skill for that skill cycle then you really lose a lot of the value of this skill what you want to do is cast this active skill before the target even gets the chance to cast theirs and basically the best way to guarantee that you do that is by pairing him with a commander that has a lower rage cost and huo is right now the best commander to do that with right he seems to be the pair that was made for belisarius prime i think if people are going to use belisarius prime it's going to be huo primary belisarius prime secondary that seems like the most obvious best pairing for this and honestly that pairing is going to absolutely shred it is as a single pairing going to perform exceptionally well i can already see it now it's going to be very very dominant in the open field now here's the thing about that pairing the amount of attack on this pairing is through the roof we have 70 percent attack total we have 60 percent defense total if you have the expertise to huo if not it's 55 and of course you'll have the 25 percent skill damage from huo and then if the target and when the target goes below 80 percent now you have 30 percent more skill damage and huo is still already hitting like a truck a 2700 damage factor is unbelievable and 2400 is nothing to ignore okay it's a little bit better than nevsky it's not the best single target damage in the game but it is definitely going to hit really hard especially with massive skill damage bonuses so i personally think that the huo pairing is the pairing for belisarius prime okay you really i mean i don't think you could really do the joan pairing you'd probably need to joan be joan primary and you know i just don't think that that is going to be what you want again i think you want the fastest possible rage cycle 
on that Belisarius and so Huo is an option the other thing is Zhang Yu also cavalry skill tree very very nice here and we've got a really nice defense reduction here it's a very outdated uh damage factor in general it's not horrible but the fact that you lose 25 percent for each target is quite embarrassing but he also gets 40 percent attack 15 percent March speed you could do a 5515 with your Zhang Yu and that would be insane also he has the lower rage cost right that's like why you would do this pairing and so I think if you're running like three or more pairs for cavalry you're probably running Zhang Yu with Belisarius possibly or you move the Belisarius obviously you keep him with Huo and then you move William and you just keep William on your Zhang Yu and then you're chilling that could be something I actually think that right now cavalry will have three solid open field pairings but here's why I'm not super excited about Belisarius Prime okay first of all um again active skill on him absolutely insane debuff like one of the craziest debuffs in the game expertise is going to be a must have for swarming things down okay insane expertise but the thing is the rest of his kit is not that exciting okay he has 10 percent less skill damage taken that's not that exciting okay 25 percent defense that's less than Huo. it's nothing game breaking 30 percent attack that's less attack than Zhang Yu who's like four years old three years old at this point okay so realistically the stats on this commander kind of underwhelming 500 instant proc damage also underwhelming five second cooldown on that very very underwhelming okay if we look at somebody like William okay he has a 1000 damage 1000 damage factor instant proc uh where is it on the third skill here right yeah when he's expertise of course but even still even if he's not it's still 800 and if they're surrounded targets it's even more right so uh, you actually get let's let's break it down here because here's the thing right when we're looking at Belisarius Prime you're not you can't just look at him as a commander you have to look at what would he replace right who in your lineup would he replace and right now I mean these are the four best commanders in the game right now for cavalry okay and really William is the closest to being on the chopping block and so you have to look at how does Belisarius Prime compare to William that's how you're going to be able to decide if people use Belisarius Prime as meta or if his niche role will be to swarm things down okay first of all we look at the active skill and surprise William deals more damage okay now that might look shocking to you because it's 1500 but guys if he hits only two targets he effectively has a 2550 damage factor so William is actually his active skill will most of the time I know it's a rectangle so you know it is what it is you might miss some targets but even if you only hit two of the three you're dealing more damage than Belisarius Prime okay you also have a crazy debuff on William too the target can't benefit from increased skill damage that's really good okay let's look at the second skill we have 20 percent attack 15 percent March speed and outside of territory you deal 10 percent more damage okay 10 percent all damage outside of territory is insane that's really good and if you look at the third skill we have even if he's not expertise we have 20 percent attack and 20 percent attack here so okay so he has 40 percent attack minimum or 50 percent if he's expertise that's more attack than Belisarius Prime okay and then if we look at the fourth skill here we have a chance or when you hit a target you're going to get up to 20 percent defense for three seconds now it's not as good as the 25 percent all defense on Belisarius Prime but you're still getting some defense a decent amount of defense for a decent amount of time okay and that's every time that you hit something with your active skill you're going to get that three second uptime if you want you could consider this like maybe 10 percent defense right so at the end of the day is Belisarius Prime better than William man I mean for swarming things down definitely right definitely and is his debuff better than this I would say so for sure um especially if you pair him with Huo but at the end of the day it's like it's it's not like I mean we have to see testing of course but Belisarius Prime doesn't seem like obviously an insane improvement over William all right it seems like maybe a just a slight step above William but the thing is too William has AoE which historically is what you want for uh for an open field meta right we don't have any AoE and Belisarius so I mean and again the active skill on William if you're hitting two targets or more it's going to deal more damage than Belisarius and that's a very old commander right especially with the 10% all damage so really I think with Belisarius Prime I think we're looking at a little bit of a more sort of niche commander in my opinion now when the testing comes out we'll see will I be investing in him I probably will give him a try I think 5551 is probably a really good stopping point 
or Belisarius Prime. Honestly, the last skill is really not exciting to me. I mean, again, it's a conditional skill damage bonus. Yes, it's a good skill damage bonus, but it is conditional. I don't know, man. I just don't think this is a must expertise commander unless of course you are swarming down structures. Then this is a, this is the commander for you. Okay. So Wells watching, if you're watching this video, you need this commander pretty much with your Huo. To me, that just seems like the most obvious choice. Um, but for everyone else, that's just open fielding. I think this could be a really good value build, especially if you have Huo already. Right. But the question is, do you need him? Uh, if you've already got the Huo William Nevsky Joan, do you need him? The answer is we're going to have to wait and see. Um, if this debuff was AOE, no question you would need him, right? Just that would be like the Herman prime thing. Um, but it's not it's single target. The damage factor is not insane. Um, and his stats aren't insane either. So his instant procs, not insane. It's worse than Williams, right? So really the question is, is his active skill and expertise good enough to make him meta, especially considering he can't be a primary unless you're going to run around being a farm killer. The answer is, I don't know. I don't know. Does he have a place? Yes. Will Wales expertise him? Yes. Will he be insane for swarming things? Yes. Is he a must have commander for free to play players? I don't, I don't know. If you've been holding out on William and you don't have William, then I'd probably say do a five, 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 one for Belisarius prime. And, and then you'll be golden. I think this dude is going to be hitting pretty hard, especially with Huo. Uh, but I also think you probably need Huo actually. Now that I think about it like this, like if you only have Nevsky, would you do Nevsky Belisarius over like Joan? No, definitely not. Um, so yeah, really interesting kit here on Belisarius prime. I'd love to know what you guys think. Are you underwhelmed? Are you excited for him? What do you guys think? I think that it's important to call out the truth about these things. You know, I don't want to just say every new commander's meta. Okay. I don't want to say that. I don't think that that is a realistic evaluation of this commander. I think there's an obvious role this commander plays. I think there's an obvious pairing this commander has, but is he going to be the best cavalry commander in the game? Probably not unless you want to swarm things down. So I'd love to hear from you guys down there. Of course, while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel. It's how it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it. And also consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.